Ghouta is almost over. 90% has been liberated by Syria's government. The army of Islam, Nusra, Al-Qaeda affiliate, other Islamists, they've lost, opting to take the buses to rebel territories. The vast majority of rebels surrendered and negotiations are underway for the handover of the last rebel stronghold. On the cusp of victory, as is now tradition, Assad goes against all reason and logic. He's won this battle and launches chemical weapons at civilians. According to his enemies, he can't help it. The United States continues to use all efforts available to hold those who use chemical weapons in Syria and otherwise accountable. The regime's history of using chemical weapons against its own people is not in dispute. Russia warned repeatedly that this may happen. They had intelligence a month ago that rebels were preparing to stage these attacks. Why not? If they can't fight, if they can't win, why not try to provoke an international intervention? It's worked before. That is, not to say we're jumping to conclusions. Meanwhile, in a besieged enclave of eastern Ghouta, rebels are continuing to leave. The last group has finally agreed to be evacuated to the north of the country. We spoke to some doctors who worked in Douma during previous reports of chemical attacks in the area. There was one case I faced. On January the 13th at 6 a.m., reports came in about the strike and the use of chemical weapons. Six people were hospitalized. We examined them and found no problems with their airways. They were just scared. Nothing pointed to it, and it was impossible to talk about it, even after analysis of blood and clothes. During my work there, there were also cases on January 22nd and February 25th. During the medical examinations, nothing was found. Those people had the symptoms of panic and fear, but not poisoning. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined uh, live by political analyst Taleb Ibrahim. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good to have you on the programme. The Israeli uh, airstrike, or at least what the Russian military is saying, is an Israeli airstrike. It's come at a very tense time uh, in Syria. What do you make of the timing of this whole incident? I think, yes, uh, one hour ago that the Syrian army spokesman uh, said that it was uh, an Israeli Air Force attack by F-15 from Lebanese skies. Uh, and they, made the, they, they launched eight missiles against the T-4 air base and Syrian army could shoot down five of those five mi uh, missiles. I think uh, this is uh, other, uh, another evidence that Israel is backing terrorist groups and all militants who are fighting the Syrian state because we used, uh, after every victory for the Syrian army that Israel is intervening, to back those uh, militants who are actually their allies and it is and they are Israeli arms inside Syria and how could this strike affect the ongoing conflict I mean do you think it will spark more tension there's a Security Council meeting tonight uh, presumably we'll see some uh, some strong rhetoric there presumably some some diplomatic consequences some military consequences um, how do you think it will affect the resolution here Um, I didn't hear your question, well, but if you are talking about any kind of uh, political resolution. Yes, how do you think this strike will, will affect the ongoing conflict? Obviously, there, there's the dialogue negotiation uh, going to take place. Do you yeah. think that will be put on hold now as a result of this, uh, of this very controversial incident? I don't think that the Israeli airstrike should be effective and it will not make anything, it will not make any change on the ground if, you, if we will talk about the resolution in Ghouta or on the political resolution in Syria in general. But this is, as I told you, another evidence that Israel is 
backing terrorists in Syria. And Israel is trying to uh, play a certain role inside Syria to say to the international community that Israel is ready and it can intervene inside Syria and it can do anything. But, but actually, this is senseless and um, it will not make any change on the ground or on the political level. Mm. Israel, of course, so far at least uh, denied to uh, decline to comment either way on involvement. We'll uh, see what happens at that Security Council meeting. Uh, political analysts.